and welcome back to another episode of Cafe Lily, or your host, Rosa and Kelsey. Kelsey and Rosa. Thank you, Rosa, and Happy New Year to you. And Happy New Year to you. Well, by the time this episode is released. By the time this episode is released, it will be New Year's Day in my time zone, which is the only time zone I respect, so we're celebrating New Year's on this episode. <laughs> but you know, when the New Year comes, the thing that everyone likes to do is make New Year's resolutions. So we thought that we could make some new Yuri's resolutions. Yeah. So, Kelsey, what is your new Yuri resolution? My New Year's resolution is that this year I want to create at least one original Yuri comic one shot. Not related to anything ongoing that I have. I want to make one original Yuri one shot. Oh. Can't wait to see what it says. Thank you. What's it going to be? We'll just have to find out. And what's your New Yuri's resolution? My new Yuri resolution is I want to make a Yuri that has a weird girl as a protagonist that looks like she smells like dirt. Yeah, that's critical. And you'll understand where the inspiration comes from soon. <laughs> yeah, we we had some good comics that we read this week. That's right. But before that, do you want to start with your first topic? Yes, that's right. So I felt this was important, but I wanted to talk about I'm in love with a villainess. Now, last time we talked about an anime I started watching. It stars Ray Taylor, who has been transported, well, Isekai to be more accurate, into her favorite game. She goes in to try and spend time with her favorite character she's in love with, Claire. Throughout the series, throughout the anime, they, they go into Yuri antics, and it was a fun time. But after finishing the first season, I felt there's a lot I need to mention in part of like extra content warning. Now, first thing first, we go through her arc where it's revealed that one of the characters, content warning ahead, on mentions of incest and sexual assault, but yeah, uh, one of the characters, it is revealed that they, them and their brother have a romantic relationship that resulted in a conflict where they attempted to betray their the kingdom in order to run away and be together so which is yeesh. I wouldn't say it glamorizes it or anything but it is kind of like oof yeah, kind of heavy yeah and I, it was very straightforward so I'm like yeah that's kind of messed up at least with Ray saying that and then we are introduced to a character later in the series it is the childhood friend of Claire, who she would occasionally call like sister. It is revealed that they met when they're kids, and when they first met, she thought she was a boy. So it's like her childhood friend had like a uh, princely demeanor and everything, which I thought was interesting as someone to like rival Ray in a way that was fun. But unfortunately, I think this was of course handled like badly but like it was revealed that like she had her way with one of her servants that she was in love with and it's very unfortunate and I think how they were trying to compare her not being able to confess her love to Ray, not being able to be honest with her feelings through that is kind of botched or unfortunate because I feel like they could have gone with the narrative differently, but the way they chose that is, like, very distasteful. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, because overall, In Love with a Villainess is, like, a really good Yuri. A really fun Yuri, but when you go into the nitty-gritty and these things, it's, like, it's it's unfortunate. It's, it messes up in that way. It seems like it's one of those tropes of isekai or fantasy anime that... 
just sort of get added into every show and it's like no you think about what you're showing here <laughs> you don't need to put this kind of trope in the show yeah yeah i feel like it's something that's like wanted to give depth and wanted to give something above beyond that year which i get but it seems that it's kind of like it has like a very hard time like handling that and i think it's at its best where it's like it's just Ray like messing around with the world and is launching and using it to her advantage. Mm. Which it still does all the way to the end. But all in all, I think it's kind of. It's kind of like botch in many places with like what it tries to tackle. Yeah, so I guess that's a, a big asterisk on your recommendation last time. Yes, exactly. It, I have. A recommendation it's a strong yuri um what the series implies for what happens later in is interesting and it's a good way of like using ray's knowledge of like the game she really loves but at the same time i am i'm concerned about like how much more things i try to cover and then it just like falls on his face badly I like the year aspect, but it's a thing I had to put like big asterisks on. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah. And like, not in the Gutena way, where it's like saying something with it. It's like, it's just like a flop. Okay, well, that was an important update though. Yes, and I felt it was very important to bring it up. Okay, do we want to get into the first Yuri comic we read this week then? Yes. 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 We both read The Guy She Was Interested In Wasn't A Guy At All by Arai Sumiko, which is about a high school girl called Mitsuki who works at her uncle's music store. One day, her classmate from school, a popular girl named Aya, comes into the store and Mitsuki helps her out. But because outside of school, Mitsuki dresses in kind of an androgynous style and wears a mask, Aya mistakes Mitsuki for a guy, and thinking that she's such a cool guy, develops a crush on her. Yeah, yeah. So they start bonding over their shared taste in music. They both prefer American rock bands. And they're kind of called like, is this just like like a like a forty or thirty year old or something like that? Because like they felt that like, it's like out of their like demographic. Yeah, Mitsuki's uncle is such a funny character. He, at one point, I uh, makes a playlist for Mitsuki. Oh yes, and Mitsuki's like, ah, oh, look at this playlist, and her uncle looks at it and he's like, is this an old man? Yeah, he's like, <laughs> this is this person has a good great taste, but like. Did the old man give it to you? <laughs> it's like, oh my god. It's like, no, it was my friend. <laughs> and like, when the, when Aya comes in and Uncle sees them getting along, he's like, Oh, my Mitsuki's gonna have children. Gonna get married soon. She's gonna have children. It's like, oh my god, he's <laughs> such a supporting and loving uncle. It's like, <sighs> my gay niece. <laughs> He's too funny. All the characters, the side characters are so supportive. Even the the guy who you think will be like a, a rival or a bully character, one of the boys in their class in school. He's like, no, I support lesbians. Let's go lesbians. <laughs> That's exactly what he says. He shows up and he sees them getting along and he's just like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Confess your love. Go for it, girl. And then like, in the meanwhile, at school, Mitsuki, it's like, uh, I can't let Aya figure out. I don't want her to be disappointed. Uh. And then, like, her swag, it's too cool. So, like, whenever she hangs out with, like, or, like, she in class, whenever she, like, interacts with Aya, she's suddenly like, oh, are you okay? Looks at her lovingly. <laughs> her swag, it's too much. Bitch, it's too bad. It's too funny, the difference between them. Because at school, Mitsuki is quite shy and kind of considered a nerdy type. But Aya is in with the popular girls. She's she's that kind of girl. And even Mitsuki says, we couldn't get along because we're from different like cliques in school. What truly unites them is their love for music. Their love for dad rock. Yeah. 
<laughs> like, I even went in and like played some of the music while watching. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 like I listened to some of these before. I listened to this on Black Sabbath and Beck. That seems like a good way to read it. Yeah, yeah, like try to invest yourself in it, get into it. I think this was such a cute read. Uh, they're really short chapters. It's a webcomic, isn't it? Because every chapter is only like, four pages or fewer. Yeah, yeah, and I get, and a lot of it is like posted onto the artist Twitter, if I remember correctly. But yeah, the art is like gorgeous. The fashion is amazing. I just love the way they draw Mitsuki. I read up to the point of the culture festival and I stopped there because I read it like all in one sitting but I'm gonna keep reading it. Yes, it's so good. Oh my god, just the quote. Listen, her, that is a good build up. That is a good payoff. But yeah. Yeah, that's, that was the guy she was interested in wasn't a guy at all by Arai Sumiko. Yeah, it's good. Read it. Let's talk about this wonderful one shot called The Reason I Was Drawn to You. Yes, this one. Who was this by? I didn't write down the author's name. This is by Shinta Hirokara. This is a one shot about a lonely, dreary girl named. Does she have a name? Or is it one of those cases where she doesn't get one? Oh, yeah. She doesn't at all. So there's this introvert who is really into this VTuber boy, emo VTuber boy, named Kuro Urshi. She is in love with this VTuber. She has all his merch, always like watching him, catching up, donating. Um, one day she decided, let me, let me DM him. I wanna meet up with you. And they do. They do get to meet up. But she was in it for a surprise. She found out that Kuro Urushi was a girl. And not just any girl, a preppy girl. The complete opposite of like Kuro's <laughs> emo goth boy demeanor. So, like, just the introvert is just sitting there thinking, oh, there's no way. Like, how? And she's like, oh yeah, I just use a voice changer for my stream. And she's like, wants to know, like, how? How? Is this really her? Is it her girl? Is this his girlfriend? There's no way. I'm going to expose her for the fraud she really is. Thinking she was just in it for the popularity. When she asked, she said, so why did you want to be a VTuber? And she tells her, because they wanted to kill someone. <laughs> Yeah, someone talked shit to her once, so she decided, let me get really famous, and then kill him. And this made the introvert really appreciate and love her, and understands like, yes, this is what I was surely drawn to her. It's it's a wonderful one shot. I have to say, both of the comics that you sent to me to read this week are about gloomy, introverted girls who are in love with preppy girls. Is that going to be the topic of your next comic? Honestly? Yeah, in a way. I just love that gloomy girl demeanor because I feel like there's something fascinating. The more pathetic you make them, the more funny the scenario. I mean, like, to bring up another gloomy semi yuri thing, um, there's Wadamote to Moko. Now, at first, it's like, not that, but once you get into, once it it goes later into the series. It's just like straight up, just like Tomoka learns to so socialize, and then every girl wants to be with her. It's like this gloomy introvert learned to socialize, and now every girl wants to be with her. And there's just something hilarious about that. I, I just want to delve into that comedy. I'm sure that you would do an excellent take on that kind of dynamic. The fun part would be designing the gloomy character just because just. They're just so funnily designed because like they're as simple as like wearing like a sweater and and it just still adds a lot to their character. But yeah. Totally recommend taking a quick read on the reason I was drawn to you. Now let's talk about the one you read, 
The love of my life. Yes, I reread an old favorite Yuri comic of mine, which is Love My Life by Yamaji Ebine. It's from the year 2000, and it doesn't have an official English release, sadly, but it has a French release, so I'd like to get my hands on that. Anyway, Love My Life is about a lesbian university student called Ichiko. She lives with her father, and her mother passed away when she was young, but Ichiko is in a committed relationship with her girlfriend, Eddie, and one day she decides that she needs to come out to her father. She just thinks that now is the right time, and Eddie is very supportive of that. She says, okay, I'll go with you, and we'll come out to your father together. Aww. And they do that, and he has a very unexpected reaction. He, in return, comes out to her. <gasps> he says, I'm gay, your mother was a lesbian, but despite this, we both wanted to raise a child, so we decided to have you and raise you as friends, despite being in relationships with other people. Oh my god. And that's pretty much the first chapter. So now Ichiko needs to navigate the changing understanding of the people in her life. She meets her father's boyfriend. She gets back in contact with someone who she thought was just like a family friend, but was actually her mother's girlfriend. And they talk and she comes to a new understanding about her mother. Uh, there's a story about her friendship with her best friend in uni, who is a gay man. Ooh. And of course, there's the relationship she has with her girlfriend. So overall, it's very character driven, kind of slice of lifey. And I think that it's very interesting and worth a read if you like character dramas. The premise sounds very strong. And like with the amount of like layers to like the reality, like everyone was gay this entire time. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> That's a good reveal. It's like, yeah, your father was gay, your mother was gay, you're a lesbian. That's your mother's girlfriend. That's your father's boyfriend. Yes. That dog down the street is also gay. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that it's it's a very interesting character dynamic. And the father goes into more detail about it. He says, make no mistake, this wasn't a simple lavender marriage. Even though we weren't in love, we had a different kind of love in our friendship and our love for our daughter. So they had a very complicated relationship, it seems like, and it's very interesting that the comic goes into detail about that. It's a very interesting scenario indeed, because for this child to be made out of love of friendship is very unique, because that's like something you don't really see or hear about. And if it is, it would probably be something to look down upon, but like, it's something that really sounds like it really wants to explore the relations and like the different interactions. Yeah, it's a big theme is sort of unconventional relationships in the gay community. And even at one point, Ichiko pretends to date her gay boy best friend because he's getting concerned that people will suspect him of being gay. For not having a girlfriend and Eddie Ichiko's girlfriend is a little bit jealous of that even though she acknowledges that they're only pretending to date she's like hmm I don't know how to feel about that and it's all very complicated yeah which I can understand because imagine like there's like wanting the priority not be out in the open but then it's like also like missing out on like what could be them spending time together and then them spending it's all there with their friend. So it's very complicated, but it's a very it's very wonderful that it wants to explore these dynamics. Yeah. I definitely want to check it out. Yeah, it's uh, sort of an older target audience, probably more adult targeted. But it's a short read. It's only a single volume of 12 chapters, so not overly long. And I think it, it says what it wants to say. And... It's very well written. Glad to hear. And I'm glad it's like very compact, which 
I definitely would like to see the audience like hear, read and talk about it. So yeah. So do we have any more to talk about? No, I don't think so. Oh, we ha we have to thank everyone for the charity stream. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you all so much for taking part in the charity stream. I was happy to be a part of it and to draw for people, and I'm glad to see our donations will be going to good use in helping people who are protesting for Palestine and keeping them safe legally. Yeah, it's a really important cause. Uh, I wasn't there as an artist, mm -hmm. but because we hit those stretch goals, thanks to everyone's generous donations, we will be having a stream. But yeah, we look forward to doing the Precure streams because one of the one of the two games look very fun to play, so Yeah, that'll be happening in the in the coming weeks. And if everything goes to plan, the next episode of Cafe Lily might have a special guest. Yep, a very special guest. We talked about their work on here, so look forward to it. Yep, so that's what's on the docket for the coming weeks, so look forward to it. Yep. And hey, we're going to talk about our top three Yuri's too. So look forward to that. Well, I say it's time to close up shop. Thank you so much for playing our game. So I don't know what game was involved, but we'll see you next Yuri. Yeah, see you next Yuri, and maybe we'll have another story about a fumbling butch. What? Which one? <laughs> Look in the mirror, King. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>